The Holy Gospel is found in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning the 12th verse. Would you please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel? Jesus is speaking and says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only on what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Holy Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, you just met some of our family visiting with us. We're having a great time. But they didn't drive here. They flew on an airplane, as most of you have. And have you ever wondered how an airline pilot knows how to get you from point A to point B? Or from Fort Myers to Phoenix, Arizona? You know, well, in their case, it was Louisville to Punta Gorda. And he probably used what's called VOR. That's short for Omnidirectional Radio Range. It's a navigational system that was invented in the early 1950s. I used it when I was a private pilot flying back in the 60s and 70s. I could fly all over the country using VOR because VOR guided the plane I was flying to my destination. And now we have GPS, which is Global Positioning System. You have it in your car, maybe, or in your cell phone. And it's based upon the time and your known position where you are on the face of the earth in relationship to specific satellites going around the earth. Now, GPS isn't installed necessarily in every plane, but by using GPS and VOR, a pilot can set the course of the aircraft to or from a destination on his dial and if the aircraft drifts from that set course, it shows the plane is off course and the pilot can correct it and get right back on course. And guess what? That's exactly what we learned last Sunday. It's when God sent His Holy Spirit upon His disciples to be their guide in life. Yes, the Holy Spirit can guide your life today because God can be your spiritual VOR. When you get off course, He's going to let you know it and you're going to get back on. Not only is He going to show you the way for your life, He's going to give you spiritual aid and directions that will lead you in His truth to your final destination. And you know what that is? Eternal life. That's your final destination. So the Holy Spirit is not only in your head to guide you. The Holy Spirit's in your heart to teach you. Because the Holy Spirit is keeping nothing back from you that is profitable for you. He's going to show you things to come but you're never going to understand the Holy Spirit in your life until you get rid of all that anger and guilt feeling, you know? Because that's why we have salvation. Salvation delivers you from the power and effect of sin in your life. And salvation helps you know where you are to see yourself as God sees you. 
It helps you also have a fuller view of Jesus and a greater affection for him. And the more you pray, the more you depend upon the Holy Spirit. And your life will become easier because the Holy Spirit has taken his place upon this earth to be your spiritual VOR. Now, in our lesson today, the disciples were hurting. Jesus was going to leave them. After all that he had revealed to his 12 disciples concerning himself throughout that three-year ministry that he had, the hours were counting down to his crucifixion on a cross. And Jesus said, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. And that's the problem today. We're more influenced by what the world says than we are by the Word of God. <laughs> We're more informed by Oprah than we are by Obadiah. And a lot of folks are hoping to get to heaven knowing more about the stock market than they do about God's Word. But be careful. Don't buy into individualism. You know, that's when you focus upon yourself. I don't need anybody. I can do it myself. That's individualism. Or secularism. That means I'm not going to trust anything that has anything to do with religion. Or relativism. Oh, knowledge, truth, morality. None of that is definite. They don't prove anything. Listen, these are all new philosophies that are old as the Garden of Eden. Do you remember what Satan said to Adam and Eve? He said, hey, try this apple. It's good for you. You'll live forever, and you're, you'll never know anything but happiness. Well, Satan's still telling those same old lies. He's wrapped them up a little better. They're a little prettier now. He makes them so appealing, but... Today, we're looking at the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot of confusion about who the Holy Spirit is and what He does. But the thing to learn today is how God can become your VOR, your personal spiritual navigation system. Now, he's not going to weigh you down with a lot of stuff you don't need to know right now. You see, God's revelation is one revelation at a time. When God's your navigator, you're going to end up victorious. No matter how hard your circumstances in life may become, <laughs> it reminds me of that old country preacher. He was challenged by a highly educated diagnostic from the city who believed nothing can be known about the existence of God beyond physical evidence. And he asked the old country preacher, why do you Christians constantly claim assurance of victory in the battle of eternity? <laughs> well, the old country preacher looked at him and smiled said, well, son, it says in the beginning of my Bible that God was in charge when time started up. And then I flips over to the end of my Bible and I reads that God will be in charge when time runs down. So I figure that twixt the beginning and twixt the end, there weren't nobody big enough to whoop them. And that's right. Nobody has taken God on from the time of creation. And that's God's revelation. It grows. You know more about God right now than you did yesterday. 
You know more about God tomorrow than you will of last week or last year. You see, revelation grows. And at the beginning of your adventure with God, you couldn't understand everything that you understand about God now. It's, it's like one theologian said, when you teach a child algebra, don't start with a binomial theorem. Approach them gradually. And don't start with difficult patch, passages when you teach a child to learn Latin or Greek. Start with something that's easy and simple. Well, God's revelation is like that. God's going to teach you what, when, and where, and how you should learn on His time, when you're ready for it. And it's hard to imagine that the eternal God, the God of the universe, can be involved with us. We only have a lifespan of not more than a hundred years, but yet He's involved with each one of you. He has an eternal purpose in your life. It goes way beyond your allotted time on this earth. It's called eternity. Now listen, this is important. If the Holy Spirit inspired and oversaw the writing of the Holy Bible, then there can't be any mistakes in it. And you can't mess with the inspiration of the Holy Bible without interfering with what you believe in God. Because we're told the Holy Spirit will reveal all things. First of all, He will reveal the past. John 14, 26 says, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send, when He comes, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So the first thing He teaches you is all about yourself, your personal history. Did you ever stop to think that everything you've ever experienced, every person you've ever met in your life had a purpose in your life? You see, God has used all those people and things to make you the person you are today. Someone said, well, I'm self-made. <laughs> that sounds great. But who fed you when you were a baby? You know, who taught you when you were in grade school? Who paved the roads you drove on this morning? You see, there's no such thing as a self-made person. Oh. But the second thing the Holy Spirit teaches is about the present. Chapter 15, verse 26 says, But when the Comforter has come, this is in our lesson today, whom I will send to you from the Father, that's the Holy Comforter, the Holy Spirit, even the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. You see, the Holy Spirit is constantly teaching you truth. But are you listening? Then verse 13, the third thing says, He shows the future. That's the prophetic part of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit reveals the past, the present, the future. How? Because He is the eternal Spirit of God, which means He's present in all three of those times, at all time, at once, the past, the present, the future. But what Jesus said was, what He had to say to the disciples was more than they could bear at that time. So, <laughs> if you're like lots of people, oh, I was fun yesterday at the house. 
watching the girls try to figure out how to use a dishwasher. And, and then the laundry. Oh, boy, they brought all their laundry with them. And they pile it up. Well, you want to get it done quickly as possible, so you just stuff everything in the washing machine to the brim and hope for clean clothes? Well, not necessarily. It may be energy efficient to only run full loads of laundry, but overfilling the washing machine isn't a good idea. It's not good for the clothes. It's not good for the machine. So how do you know what makes a full load? The best load is when you mix various sizes. That helps you get a complete washing and rinsing. But a machine that's overloaded with large, bulky items has a hard time getting everything wet. And the soap won't distribute evenly. Gives you poor washing, rinsing, clothes come out wetter than they should. It's damaging to the clothes. It's damaged to the machine. And that's the way it is with God. God determines how much of a load you can carry. Paul said it in 2 Corinthians 6.10. Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Do you get that? He said, I seem to have more than my share of problems. But I also have plenty of reasons to rejoice. You see... Not only does God have a purpose for everything you go through, but you don't have to go through them forever. Remember, God's your VOR. He is trying to prepare you for things where you are going in life, and He's doing it in His time, not yours. He's not going to give you more than you can bear right now. No. Well, you may have heard, God will never give you more than you can bear. You've ever heard that? Yeah. Keith, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, No temptation has seized you that isn't common for all people. But God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted beyond your abilities. Instead, with the temptation, God will supply you with a way out so that you will be able to endure it. Paul was reminding his readers, God's not going to let you get into something beyond your abilities. There's no temptation you should feel powerless against because God will not allow you to be tempted beyond something you can't resist. And in Paul's thinking, if temptation comes to you, it's something you're strong enough to resist. You can do it. So how much can you bear? Paul was saying, we thought we were finished. We thought we were dead. We, we, we couldn't handle it. We thought it was beyond our strength. But all of that is to remind us we should have confidence in God, not in ourselves. That's where it is. Confidence in God, not in yourself. Paul's reminding you, your trials, your sufferings are not a measure of how much you can bear. You may have to endure sufferings that are more than you think you can handle. But Paul's reminding you, your sufferings are not something apart from God. They're not tests sent to you by God. Your sufferings are places where you meet God. That's why the cross is so important. It's a symbol. Not, not this empty cross. Not this empty cross. I'm talking about the cross that has Jesus on it. The cross on which the Son of God is suffering pain and humiliation and injustice and violence to the point of death. You see, the cross is a Reminder of the brokenness of the world. A brokenness where in times of suffering and pain, you can realize you're not alone. It's where you encounter God. 
right in the middle of your suffering and your pain. God's not apart from your burden and your pain. He's in it with you. All the way. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are struggling hard, all who are carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put my yoke on your shoulders. Learn of me. I'm gentle. I'm humble. And you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear. My burden is light. No. You don't demonstrate faithfulness by how easily you are able to bear the burdens that come your way. Faithfulness is, rec is demonstrated by recognizing you can't carry those burdens all by yourself. That you trust in the grace of God and that He is bearing them with you. Let the Holy Scripture, let the Holy Spirit of God become the moral compass in your life. Because a moral compass is that which defines your personal values, that guides your decision making, that helps you bear whatever comes your way, especially when you're in a troubling situation trying to decide what's right, what's wrong. When you reach that point in your spiritual life, you can take comfort in the knowledge that you are locked in on God's VOR. You're on His course, able to bear the challenges of life ahead of you, and that you're going to reach your goal. The Holy Spirit is helping you bear your Lord. The Holy Spirit will be with you all the way to the end of your life, which is the beginning of eternal life. Amen.